Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to another Massive Darkness 2 unboxing. This is for Heroes and Monsters set, The Bards and Tinkers vs. The Metal Angel. Uh, so this is another one of the Kickstarter exclusive sets. was originally part of the stretch goals, um, but after they unlocked all the characters and the enemies, they just threw it into a box. Um, so you might be able to find this uh, through, like all the other Kickstarter stuff, through uh, retailers that maybe bought the Kickstarter stuff. Um, or second hand on eBay. Um, you just might be paying a little bit for it. Uh, but if you are looking for new characters, they're going to choose two new classes as well as a new roaming monster. Um, so this video might be a little bit longer than some of the other heroes in Monster Sucks, if you've seen those, just because these characters have a little bit more going on. So we're just going to hop into them right away. Um, so of course we're going to get our rule book, which is going to explain how the bards work. Um, and then how the tinkers work, um, and then just how to mix everything in there. Um, so we'll just go ahead and get into those. Alright, so first things first, we want to look at our characters. We're going to start with the bards. They're a little bit, a little bit easier, I think, of the two. Um, Alright. And if I can get them out of the box... We have our first bard is Thalia. If I'm pronouncing that right. Um, so bard's like your musical player. So of course he's carrying a loot there. Um, so he has four health, six mana. He has tenacity ballad. Also ignores one shadow claw or uh, one black claw. Uh, his shadow ability. If your active notes are all different, select one. Unacquired song skill. It is considered active until the next turn. Alright, so some interesting things there. We're going to have to look at it, how his abilities work and what his skills are. And then we'll come back and review those. Uh, but here's his miniature. I got to get a better way to hold these up for you guys. There we go. He's got like a cloak on, he's got his, uh, his wand out, not his wand, but his, uh, what would you call that? Um, it's supposed to be the part to play the violin, or the, or the lute, as this, this case may be. Um, I can't think of what it's called, it's not a wand. Um, I don't know, someone have to comment me, the plays a musical instrument, because I sure can't think of what it's called right now. Um, alright, then we have Dylan, who has 5 health, 5 mana. It says, the Borleo of Invulnerability it also ignores 1 shield. His shadow ability is choose G, B, or E, ignore 1 die for each activation note of the chosen type. One, each activation note of the chosen type. Interesting. Alright, uh, so you'll, he's going to our typical, uh, Fat musician bards standing on a keg there. He's a guy you'd see sitting at the bar or in the tavern. I can't get the, okay, I gotta move this out of the way. I think it's trying to focus on the card and not the miniature. There he is. And he plays his with his hand, but of course, he also has a like maybe a cane, cane sword with him in his pouch. It's maybe a long sword. Alright, so there's our two bard car characters. Let's look at how the bard ability works. Uh, sure, I forgot where to set stuff. Alright, flip this down. And zoom back out. Alright, so here we have the bard's board. And we have uh, these tunes up at the top. Oops, I have them upside down. So this is how your board starts out. Um, then what you do is you have these musical notes. Which you'll play in the keys of G, B, or E. Um, uh, so then what you do is then you have starting songs. You have the Tenacity Ballad. So you have G, B, and E. All heroes in your tile gain... Uh, attack, ignore one slash. Or the Bolero of Vulnerability, which is G, E, and E. 
All heroes on your tile ignore or gain one uh, gain attack, ignore one defense dice. It says um, only one note can be placed in each column. Notes below the uh, I'm gonna call them the tunes. I think that's what they're called. Um, chord tokens. Sorry, call them chords. These are chords, and these will be notes. Um, if all the notes in a song are active, in any any order, do the effects above. And it costs three mana to put one on there. So what you have to do is just spend three mana, and they can put one on any different column, but they can never have two in the same column. So you can basically, you're going to create. So after every turn, you're going to keep putting one down. And you don't have to put them in order. You could start here, and then put one over here, and then put one here, and then come back to the beginning. It doesn't matter what order. Then once all five are played, um, then you can actually spend a point of mana to move them around. It says, uh, if the bard has all notes placed on their dashboard and wants to move any of them from one slot to another... They must spend the three mana to move each note token as long as after moving notes there are no two tokens in the same spot. Um, bards can place and move notes in this manner multiple times during their turn. Um, so you can move your notes around, but um, you have to spend three mana to move a note. So basically if you want to move notes a second time, you have to pay six mana because you have to spend three to move this, three to move this here. Um, as long as you're not in the same column. You could have all five of them sitting up in the top row if you'd like. Um, but how you're going to want to arrange them are depending on what sp uh, magical sp note songs you want to play. So, for example, if I want to use the Tenacity Ballad, I have to have something in G. So it can be anywhere here in G. It can be anywhere in B. And something in E. And then as long as they're under these three chords here, now I can use this spell. Um, and that's how that basically works. But the trick of it is, is besides having to move notes around and figure out some of this other stuff, is um, at the start of the turn, you must move all chords one slot or eight. So as if you're playing a song, everything has to move over. So now, starting this turn, I no longer have this column here active. I only have these three. So, do I have something in G? Yes. Do I have something in B? Yes. And do I have something in E? So I have G, B, and E. It doesn't matter if they're in that order, just as long as they're available. So I can still use my Tenacity Ballad because I have another one up here. But I still can't use G, E, E. Now what I could do is on my next turn, um, or during, during my next, for my next turn, because then everything's going to move over. Now I have um, nothing in B right now so i can't use this one i have nothing in e so what i could do well, i have one in e so i could just spend three mana to move this one to b and then now i can still use my uh tenacity ballad because i have one in each column but now if i want to set up in the bold row of invulnerability i need one down in e um i could spend three mana to move this one down to e so then my next turn after that then this would move, basically this would move over, so basically have one there. So now I have one in E, one in G, and one in B. So I can still use all three of them, but if I want that extra one, I gotta move something back down to E. Um, so again, that could be a case, I can move this one down, or I can move this one down. So you get some different options there. It's very interesting on how you want to do that. Um... There's really no reason to move something from one side to the other because you can just move these guys up and down. Um, but yeah, every time you want to move one, you have to spend three. And that's essentially how they work. But they have the starting spells. But then their other skills will gain them more. Um, will gain them more spells. So let's take a look at their skill cards. Actually, before we get into that, one other thing we do have to point out is bards have the one restriction. To be able to even use any of their abilities, they have to have a musical instrument. So you start off with the Magical Ocarina. This is a starting card from the base set. Um, so they'll have to take this if they want to be able to use them. If you give them any other weapon, 
they can't play um, unless because it's a two-handed weapon you can't give that they can't use their musical skills so they are kind of limited on what they can do uh, because of that the other thing that happens is because of that also from the base game you have to pull out the loot which is a common item the inspiring drums, which is a rare item, and the angelic flute, which is an epic item. And you set them aside. Um, so then what a uh, sort of bard can do is during their turn, um, uh, something extra much rare. During their turn, they, can, they may discard two items of the same tier to gain the equipment instrument of the corresponding tier. Um, instruments from this are set up during the set. So there's the Magical Orc, Green of the Loot, and Shining Drums, Angelic Poot, and then any Bard-only cards. So this would be like their, uh, set items. Um, but you have to discard two cards of the same rarity. So starting off, you're going to start with, of course, you're going to have a common, or, uh, that's considered a common, so if you want to upgrade your loot, uh, you have to discard your Magical Ocarina and one other thing, and then you can take the loot from wherever and just immediately upgrade to it, which now gets your ability. Um, and then you have to do that for each one. Um, so yeah, they function a little bit differently uh, for gaining loot and using equipment. Alright, so let's look at their abilities. We have Swing Groove. So you have to have GG and B. Before the enemy phase, all, your, all heroes in your tile may move one. Heroes don't take reaction damage during this move. And then two it says before enemy phase, all heroes in your tile may move, don't take reaction damage, and deal one wound to each enemy in the zone they move from they move from during this move. And then level three. Um so now they deal three wounds to each enemy in the zone they move from during this turn. So it's actually pretty pretty powerful. Like these are probably maybe a little bit they might be a little bit more powerful than some of the other things, but that's because you have a lot more management you have to do um, to keep some of these around. Our second skill is the Trance Rhythm, so a B, B, and E. To start of each phase, start of each enemy phase, add one Frost to an enemy in your tile. Uh, trance Rhythm 2, at the start of an enemy, add, add one Frost up to two enemies in your tile. And then level three, still adding the two, up to two. Um, and then during the darkness phase, mobs spawn with one less minion. Um, so it's actually kind of helpful, makes them a little bit easier to take care of. And our third tier is uh, the Serenade of Calmness. At the beginning of your turn, before advancing the chord, choose B, G, or E. For each active note of the chosen type, heal one hero in your tile by one. You may target multiple heroes. So you could have lined this up at some point if you need to heal and move everything over and do a bunch of healing. Um, then this one says, uh, Start a turn before advancing a note. Choose B for each active note of the chosen type. Heal uh, each hero in your tile by one. So what was the difference there? Oh, so heal... Heal one hero or heal each hero. And then level three. Heal each hero and they gain a mana. So it's kind of fun. Different different ways of playing. Do you want to do damage? Do you want to do frost to slow guys down? Or do you want to heal? Alright, then our next tier are the instrument proficiency. Uh, you may equip instruments to your accessory slot. If you do, they do not grant attack dice. So now this is actually where this is kind of neat, because that way if you don't want to waste your two hands, uh, but you still want to be able to use all your instrument abilities, you can go ahead and take this when you hit level 2, now you can start equipping regular weapons. Um, and then we have Proficiency 2. If you do, they do not grant attack dice, but you may gain Magic Attack plus 1 die. So you gain some extra dice for doing that. And the other one is Death Notes 1. At the start of your turn before advancing the chords, deal one wound at one enemy in your tile for each different active note. You may target multiple enemies. And then Death Note 2. 
before starting your turn, before advancing the cards, deal one wound to each enemy in your tile for each different active note. And you only have three active notes at a time, so it's most it's going to do is three damage. But hey, three free wounds every you know, every turn, that's not bad. Alright, then if you are playing the uh, Heavenfall campaign and you're up to higher levels, we can get the upgraded version. So we have uh, Calm, Serenade of Calmness 4. At the start of your turn before advancing the course, choose one of the notes. For each active note chosen, each hero in your tile heals one, gains one mana, and the effect of the heroes may also remove all fire and frost from them. Trance Rhythm 4, the B, B, and E. At the start of your enemy phase, add one frost to each enemy in your tile. During the darkness phase, mobs spawn with one less minion. And Swinger 4, the G, G, and B. Before the enemy phase, each hero in your tile may move up to two. Heroes don't take reaction and deal five wounds to each enemy in the zone they move through during this move. Uh, now we can upgrade our second tiers. So if we upgrade Death Notes to three. At the start of your turn before advancing the cords, deal two wounds to each enemy in your tile for each different active note. And then instrument proficiency 3, you may equip your instruments into your accessory slot. If you do, they do not grant attack dice, but you gain magic attack plus 1. So if you do a magic attack, you'll gain 1 extra die. Then we have our hybrids. So if we go into Trance Rhythm and ser Serenade of Calmia Spore, we can do Chilling Trance, B, B, and E. Before the enemy phase, you may move one frost from one enemy to deal eight wounds to it and heal a hero in magic range by three. So that's actually a pretty good combination. The somber groove requires sing swinging groove and serenade of calmness for action. Spend six mana, kill an entire mob in a portal zone once per quest. Heroes may collectively heal equal amount of miniature. Heal equal to the amount of miniatures killed this way. Distribute you guys player wishes. That's crazy. I mean, it's a one-time use ability. But just to be like, one time, be like, dude, we can't deal with these, you know, uh, imps coming at us. Infernal imps, just boom, done. The entire thing's done. Um, and then, Grooving Hypnosis. Swing Groove and Rhythm, rhythm Transport, B, B, and E. For the enemy phase, each hero in your tile may perform one free non-attack action. Alright, and then we have the new skill. One man ban- oop, we got one man ban. We got level 2 first, so we got level 1. B, E, and E. For each instrument either equipped in your inventory, or either equipped or in your inventory, your hero heroes in your tile gain one attack and one defense. So it's actually a cool way to be like, don't toss out your old instruments. Hang on to them, trade your other equipment. Um, with this, then you can do some extra damage. And then level two, just fell over. So that's for each instrument, either equipped or in inventory. Um, each hero in your tile gains plus one. Oh, plus one sword and one. I try for different. It's not only B and E. Versus B, E, and E. So it's having even easier to cast. That is definitely cool. Then our level 10 special skill is Complex Chords. Placing and moving notes now cost 2 mana. Every time you place a moving note, you may heal any hero by 2 and deal 2 wounds to an enemy. That is sweet. And then our Lightbringer Ascension. You can roll a Shadow Dice in Light Zone, but you can't use the Light Zone effects. You instead may use Shadow Zone uh, trigger ability. Choose G, B, or E. Gain one reroll for each active note of the chosen type. So you reroll them. Alright, so that is our bar. I'm just going to double check to make sure I didn't miss anything. Nope, that is what we got. Alright. 
So that is our bard. Let's look at our bards. Um, first, look at the bard cards again, and then we'll look at their uh, set equipment. So we have Gilling here. So now we've seen what these abilities do. So you have the Boral of Invulnerability also ignores defense. So that normally says you can um, G, G, and E. Uh, and then it says Heroes on your tile attack ignores one defense dice plus ignore one shield in general. Um, so that's actually pretty cool. And then his Shadow ability is choose B, G, or E. Ignore one die for each activated activate note of the chosen type. Um, so yeah, if you activate all three, so if you, for some reason, just went G, G, and G, you could, you could do that. Um, you probably wouldn't have any spells active, but you could at least ignore three die if you really needed to. And then Thalia's is, Tenacity Valley also ignores one Shadow Claw. So normally it just ignores one Slash. Um, so here he ignores that. So basically his ignores being attacked, the other guy ignores defenses. Um, if your active notes are all different, select one unacquired steel song, consider it active until your next turn. Uh, so basically you can play songs that you normally wouldn't have access to, so that's actually fun. Alright, then we're going to look at our set items. Alright, so we have our Shadow Bane from the base game. Um, so the Shadow Bane sets, so if you have two of these set equipment, um, you get this ability. It says you're, you may use your instruments as ranged attacks. That's awesome. So now they can actually hit from any distance. And if you have four, uh, use them as range. And Tenacity Ability and Borlo and Milan Ability need one less G to be played. So normally they're G, B, and E, or G, E, and E. So now they only need B, E, or E, E. Um, and not having them on G actually opens up a lot of your other abilities. Um, and then what item do we have associated with that? So our set item is going to be the Barge Shimmering Harp. Uh, so in the light areas, you can spend, uh, deal five wounds to one mob in your tile and move up to two, move it up to two. That is crazy. So I'll actually help you take out some, maybe help you take out some of them mobs. And then now if you use that at ranged, um, so it doesn't help with that. They don't really correspond that way, but it'd still be helpful. Because so if they get next to you, you can go ahead and take them out. Like you can hit them from a distance, hit them from a distance, they get next to you. Boom, now you can do five damage to them and maybe take them out. Um, so you have Hellfire Bard from the Heavenfall campaign. Um, discard one fire from yourself. Move or place one note once per round greater power. Discard one fire from yourself. Move or place one note. Then add one fire to each enemy in your tile for each different active note. You may target multiple enemies once per round. And then Hell Flames, if you have to, it says resolve your fire abilities at the end of your turn instead of the start of your turn. So that, that uh, reason for that is to allow you to use them on these abilities um, before you have to take damage from them. So then we have his, the Bard's Infernal Flute. Um, activation immediately resolve all fire on all heroes, but healing instead of damaging wounds. And he did a roll of red die instead. That is definitely crazy. And again, imagine this at rain. I guess it wouldn't work with the, um, the other set item, because not the Shadow Bane set. But yeah, still be able to hit two distance away for five dice. Um, and set people on fire. That'd be crazy. Then finally, we have the Darkbringer, which the Darkbringers say that you, uh, as long as you have two or four, so if you have two, you can you can use the Shadow ability on this card instead. Or if you have four, you can use both. And the Shadow ability says for each active note, you gain the corresponding effect. G, you get a reroll. E, you get plus two swords. And B, you get plus two mana. So that's crazy. Crazy for what you can do with it. Different combinations. Um, oh, and we got stuck. And then we got the Bard's War Drum. Um, shadow Action. One hero on your tile performs one attack. They gain one reroll for each different active note. Um, so there's his other weapons. Alright, so that's what we have for the Bard. 
So let's take a look at our tinkerers. All right, so here's our tinkers. Now, if you thought the barge had a lot of different intricate stuff, having to spend and move stuff around, um, the tinkers are halfway easier, halfway harder because um, they don't maybe have as a complex thing, but they have a lot more to do. They actually have most most characters have one little board or one little thing that like arrows for the rogue or uh, sorry arrows for the ranger. Uh, token bag for the rogue or everyone has their own little boards that do this little bit of stuff um, The tinker actually gets three different sets of things it can do so um, It's not just like three aspects of the character. It's three separate different things um, So look at our characters first. We have a Kaylee here who has five health three mana during combat You can discard one item to roll two guy or sorry re-roll two re-roll two guys or shadow Draw one mob item from your current. Draw one mob item from your current level. So she gets to basically take mob items, and there she is. Maybe scoop this out of the way, and then I'll maybe focus on me. Yeah, so she's wielding this like hammer. She, of course, got daggers and badges. She's also carrying a giant, uh, like wrench or not wrench but it's like players um i'm not really sure what you call something that massive it has a specific name she got goggles on a little cloak which is really cool yeah definitely neat um there's her artwork again and our second guy is jebediah so he's actually in a little wheelchair um so he has, oops, uh, four health, four mana. Uh, so plus two and movement points during your first move each round, um, and then shadow. Uh, you may return one discarded item to your inventory. So these guys deal with discarding items and gaining items, which is very interesting. We'll look at their stuff. So here is his mini. Like wooden wheels and stuff, which is really cool because it kind of fits the theming of the time. So he's not like using like some future products. He's got his uh, crescent wrench there. I believe that's a crescent wrench. If I'm wrong, I apologize to tool enthusiasts for not knowing my tools. Um, but yeah, so we'll come back and we'll look at their abilities in a sec. Uh, once we get done going through how they work. So, they're going to have three separate things. So, they're going to have Bomb, Gizmos, and Exo Armor. Um, so, we'll go through each one, one at a time. Um, on how those all work. So, we have the Bomb rule. So, let's we'll grab our cart. We'll grab this here. We'll do this. So, we'll jump into our skills. So, we have skill level one. Is we have bombs. It says pay three mana or discard one item. Place one small bomb in magic range. Level two is place one small bomb or one large bomb in magic range. Or three, place two small bombs. They can each be small or large in magic range and may be placed in different zones. So the one still is going to let you place bombs. What do bombs do, you ask? Bombs say, at the start of the enemy phase, resolve each zone with a bomb in any order. Discard all bombs in that zone, and then roll a corresponding die. Each enemy in that zone takes one wound for each sword rolled. Move them each one zone. So basically, these guys can throw down explosives up to, two spa up to a space away. Um, and then, depending on what size it is, they get a roll and do more damage. Uh, so yeah, you need to roll for a small or a larger one, depending on how far they go in there. Um, so definitely gonna do some extra damage with them. And then there's gonna be the little tokens. So you're gonna have the tokens that look like these, the big ones. And then we have small ones. So you have three of each. You're not gonna be able to play more than three of each during any given turn. Um, but that is their first ability. 
Their second skill are going to be Gizmos. It says, at the start of your turn, draw one token from the treasure bag and keep it as a gizmo. So you're going to pull up them little ones that um, they're going to look like. So if we look at it, they look like the little locks. So you don't know, no, sorry, not the locks. You're going to pull the actual treasure out. So the ones that have the different symbols on the back. Um, so they will look like these three symbols. Like I have in my common treasure. So the little ones you pull right out of the bag. Um, and if you're actually playing with Heavenfall, you'll also have epic one or legendary ones as well. Um, so you get these as Gizmos. So Gizmos are special abilities. Gizmo le level two, you make, uh, Gizmo two says you make one free trade action each round. At the start of your turn, draw two tokens from the treasure bag. Choose one to keep it as a Gizmo. Um, and Gizmo three. Make one free trade action each round at the start of your turn. Draw two tokens from the treasure bag. Choose one to keep as a gizmo. You may spend three mana to keep both. So they get these free trade actions. So they have abilities that let them kind of like gain extra items. And then like you can trade them off with each other. Um, so how do gizmos work? Gizmos say, gizmos count as items of their rarity that can be traded. So every time they keep talking about discarding items... You can discard these gizmos instead. Um, although you cannot use gizmos to um, trade for leveling up new items. Um, or like at the forge. So in the forge says you have to discard two items of the same of a rarity to get something higher. They have to be actual items, not gizmo tokens. Um, I said they're used as consumables by the tinkerer. And return them to the treasure bag to be used... Uh, for one of the corresponding effects according to their reality, or reality, their rarity. Each effect may only be used once per round. So this is why you might want to gather different rarities, um, just because of that. Also, a thing to note, though, since you're pulling these from the treasure bag, is that, let's say there's only four, uh, epics in the bag, and you pull out two of, you, uh, you get gizmos, and you end up pulling out two of them, and you're just hanging on go for something, that means people aren't going to be able to draw <laughs> those two rarities until you put them back. Um, so yeah, you don't want to take super long to play it to do that. Um, so here's what you can do with the common treasures. You can either do smoke bombs. So at combat, you can reroll two dice. Cobbled wings. You can move one uh, movement point. Carrier drone. You can trade. You may also trade with one hero in any zone. Uh, so you get a couple different options there. And if we flip this over, we'll zoom it back out a little bit. So if you use um, the rares, you can use Holy Hand Explosive. Um, add one fire to an enemy in the magic range and immediately resolve all fire on that enemy using a orange die instead or replicating gadget. Return one discarded consumable to your inventory or the Orb of Darkness. Um, attacks gain plus one shadow. That's actually crazy. You gain automatic shadow ability um, for using that orb of darkness. If you use the epics, you can do a lucky coin to get one action. Freezing device, add two frost to one enemy in range. What's awesome about that is because um, the frost prevent the enemies from using actions. Um, so if you put it on a mob card, they basically, if they have, for every frost, they lose one action. So if they have two on there, they lose their entire turn. Um, and then roaming monsters are the same way. But, um, unless they have more than one action. The bosses, though, however, or sorry, the roaming monsters will ignore it unless there's two on there. So they have to have two bosses ignore anything. But roaming monsters have to have two to even be effective. If there's only one on there, they just ignore it. But if they have two, then they lose their turn. So it's awesome. It just, just straight up adds two so it can stop a roaming monster as well. Um, and then finally, we have Lightbringer Potion. Says each hero in your, in your zone fully heals and recovers mana. And that's crazy because you could use that repeatedly. Um, as long as you have them epic items. Um, and then finally, we have Legendary down at the bottom. They kind of separate them because they're only used... If you're playing the expansion campaign. But it says. Blade enhancers adds two red dice for your attacks. 
disposable shield, adds two green dice to your defense, or gift box. Draw two treasure tokens from the game bag as gizmos. Um, so that's definitely cool. Alright, so that's, their, that's how the gizmos work. So that is their second thing. Then their third thing, um, which they unlock later. Uh, sorry, they have four things, I said. They'll unlock the third one in just a sec. So the third tier of things instead, so they have bomb, gizmos, and then they have blacksmithing. So blacksmithing says pay three mana, draw one mob item from your current level. This just works with your trading. Um, here it says they count as a forge. So draw three mana, draw one mob from your current level. So they can gain items, they can use it to upgrade. Other players can come to you and you can upgrade your items. Um, and then level three, spend two to draw one mob. So it becomes a little bit cheaper. So that's actually a fun idea as well. Alright, then their next tier is their next set of abilities. So they have constructs. Um, discard two items, place one construct in one of your zones. Action, destroy one construct and place one small bomb in a zone. Construct limit one. And then constructs two. Discard two items to play as construct level two in your zone. Destroy one construct and place one small bomb in its zone. Constructs are kind of like summons. Um, basically. So you're going to get these extra little tokens. They're double-sided. So I'm not going to be able to put all three up at the same time, but there's the third one. Um, and these will act as kind of like the Shaman Summons. So we do have um, some cards for them. So you can summon a Scout, uh, which has uh, three, attack, uh, three health, cannot attack, may open doors, trade, carry items, and move. Um... So each has their own ability. Well, in the dungeon, contracts are counted as heroes for purposes of heroes and enemies targeting, but not for like other effects like health and minions and stuff like that. Uh, during a tinkerer's turn, they may activate each construct once for free, and they spend actions to activate them a second time. So basically, they get one free action every turn. Um, when activated, con constructs may perform attack or move actions. When performing a move action, each construct has two move points, just like any other hero. Constructs can't interact, open doors, recover, carry items, unless otherwise stated on their cards. Thus, do not roll shadow dice. Um, in order to defend your attack, refer to the information listed on the corresponding construct card. Whenever a construct enemy kills an enemy, the tinker gains that experience. So you'll put that little token down, it'll move around the board. Um, but then it has these stats. So the construct, uh, scout contract level one has three health, cannot attack, but it may open doors, trade, and move items. It's kind of just, it's a scout. So you go out in front and see what's happening. Um, you can flip it over to upgrade it to level two, which gives it five health and gives him two movement points. So that guy's going to be zooming around the board, seeing what's ahead. We can also do the Sentry Construct, um, which has two health. It cannot move, but it has attack to reroll one die. And it has either melee, one yellow die, or range, two or, or one orange die. So that one's just going to sit there wherever you drop it, and it's going to shoot at things or attack it. Um, and if we upgrade to level two, it gains five health, and it gets two of each die. And then finally, we have the Guard Construct, with four health, who has a defense die, melee defense, he gets plus one shield, and he has one attack yellow die. And then upgraded, goes up to six health, gets two dice of each, keeps that defense. Um, so it's definitely fun for those guys. So those are three of the four. They can use bombs, gizmos, and constructs. So there are three types of things. Their fourth one, let's say they get all sorts of stuff. So their other secondary tier is the Exo Armor. So discard three items. Gain one of the parts of the Exo Armor one. You may equip, unequip items. Uh, you may equip and unequip as 
as an item, it cannot be traded. Um, and then level 2, it says, discard 2 items and 1 part of X, uh, Exo Armor 1. Gain the corresponding parts of Exo Armor 2. You may equip or equip it as an item. It cannot be traded. So what is Exo Armor? And this is their big, their other big thing that they get. Alright, we're going to set these off to the side. So if we bring our player board over here. And we grab one of our heroes. So let's say we have Kaylee out here. You can't really see her. It's all glary. But we're going to get this Exo Armor Level 1. So it's going to be this uh, cardboard thing. So what it does is you do it. So if you have... Um, you have to discard uh, three items um, to gain parts of it. So you can discard any number of items. It doesn't have me be equipped to you. But what does happen is it says... Um, Whenever it decides it to takes to discard three of his items to gain the lore. First he moves any head, torso, leg, or miscellaneous. So you're doing the bottom, the top would be your hands. Um, into his inventory. So if you you have stuff equipped, you can discard other things to upgrade. And you don't lose this item. But what will happen is this will sit down on top of your character card now. And it replaces your items that you would have had out. Um, but it keeps you a little slot here, so you can still see your abilities, their name, their health. Um, and it'll slide right back out the same way any other card would. So that's kind of fun there. So like the first one we'll give them for their two different hands. They'll have Steam Jets, ra uh, Ranged Attack, they get a reroll a die. And then they have two, um, two yellow die for range. Or they get hand blades. They have melee melee attacks from one mana to gain one sword. Um, or they get one of each color die. Then if they want, they can also equip the bottom half. Um, which is swatch right in there. So they can get an iron helmet, which gives them spend one mana to gain one shield, armored suit, which gives them two defense, uh, mechanical legs, move one MP to gain spend one MP to gain one MP gain one movement point. And sealed engines, discard an epic item, plus one attack action once per round. Um, so that kind of makes up their entire set. Now it says you can unequip these and equip these as you want. So basically if you play these, you can unequip all your armor. Um, but like, it's like, well I have suits of armor there, I have better defensive armor, I have a better attack weapon. Um, you can do it, but you have to get rid of the other things. It's either... I'm either using the suit of armor or I'm not using the suit of armor. You don't have options. Um, what we also have though is on the flip side is we have the level two versions. So they're silver just to keep them different in case you need, you know, have the number two on them. Um, so now Scorching Jet, uh, ranged attack, we get three dice instead of one. So just upgraded versions. Um, enhanced Handle Blade, melee attack, one. Spend one mana to gain two uh, swords. We have Steel Helm, which actually gain two shields, four dice, uh, movement points plus two, or discard an epic to take an extra action. So they keep the. Uh, so we go from Hand Blade and Steam Jets to Scorching Jets and Enhanced Hand Blade. And then the bottom ones go from. Steel Helm, Heavy Suit, Reinforced Legs, and Sealed Engines. From Iron Helm, Armored Suit, Mechanical Legs, and Sealed Engines. So, Reinforced Legs, Mechanical Legs, Armored Suit, Heavy Suit, and Steel Helm, and Iron Helm. So that's definitely, that's definitely a neat thing. Then the other thing you get to do with these guys is you put down a little token for them. Um, by your character... Just to show that that's what you're you're running around in your suit of armor. Um, all right, we have more steel cards to go through. So it says, uh, "Place the lower part of his arm." It says just in the in the example here. So I can just show you quick. Um, by the little picture it says next he places the lower part of the X armor over those slots he places the active X armor 
to look at next to his miniature. Just as a reminder that you're using that armor. Um, but you don't have to play all the top and the bottom to do that armor. You only have to play part of it. Alright. Um, Alright, skill cards. Now we can upgrade if you're playing Heavenfall. So we have bomb score. Place two bombs. Um, each can be large or small in the line of in zone of line of sights. Instead of next space over, they can be line of sights. You can throw them farther. Gizmo Spore may make a free trade action each round. At the start of your turn, draw two tokens from the treasure bag. Keep both as Gizmos. You don't have to choose anymore. And then Blacksmith Spore. During your turn, you may draw one mob item from your current level once per round. Um, I think, though, did that get rid of... Yeah, so it doesn't have a list that you're a forge, so I wonder if that's in a mistake, or if the thing is you don't have to pay the mana anymore to draw the item just once during your turn, you gain um, one mob item no matter what. Maybe if they figure if you're that high of a level, you probably don't need to craft items anymore. Um, there are upgrades to our constructs. We're going to get discard to items, play construct three in your zone. Action, destroy one construct, place one large bomb in your zone. This is nice, so if, like, your uh, sentry opened up a door, it might die, go ahead and blow it up instead. Make it into a bomb. Um, all right, so let's look at our three constructs here. At level three, you have scout contract, it's up to seven. Uh, it's not attack, may open doors, trade, carry items, move. To MP and ignores reaction damage. Now you can just run through enemy areas. And then they actually have a neat you flip on the other side. It has a little full art picture of it. So you can kind of see it's like a suit of armor in there. With like a hammer on one side and a shield on the other. Like a spinning wheel with the florets. I believe those are what those are called. And little blades sticking out. Sentry Contract goes up to 7 health. Cannot attack. Or cannot move, but it has two rerolls and it has two guys. But it has two orange, now two red as well. So it gets that more powerful red. And there you can see it has its base. It's uh, basically a crossbow built into it. And it can turn, rotate in different directions. I love that there's at least one turret in this game. Um, any game that has miniatures should have at least one character that has turrets. Because it's a great idea. Hey, I can drop this, and I can let something come attack it, or it can attack while I get away. Um, the Construct Guard has three meat, uh, it's just two green guys for melee, and two orange guys for attacking, and you get plus two shields. Um, and there is a little I Iron Forge Steam of Armor. Alright, then our next set is we can upgrade our Exo Armor to level 3. Discard 5 items and 1 part of the Exo Armor 2. Gain the corresponding part of the Exo Armor 3. You may equip or unequip it as an item that cannot be traded. Um, so what you need is you have to discard the one, but once you have it, you're allowed to treat it as an equipping unequipable item. So once you basically made it and it's in play, you can use it left or right. Uh, we're going to look at that in just a sec. We're going to look at the other abilities here quick. Um, so we do have our hybrid abilities. We have Engineered Explosives, so Gizmos and Bomb Spore. Discard any Gizmo to immediately explode all bombs in Magic Ray. Apply bonuses to each bomb according to which Gizmo is spent. Um, common, lets you discard. Or, sorry, let's you reroll. Rare lets you reroll and add a sword. Epic lets you play an red die and a sword. And legendary gets one red die and two shields. What's nice about that is because normally the gigs or the bombs explode um, was it at the beginning. Uh, discard all bombs in that zone. Uh, sorry. At the start of the enemy phase, resolve each bomb. So you can blow them up before the enemy phase even. That's kind of neat. So you can just drop them, blow them up, then you get extra bonuses. Hey, they didn't die. Now I know I can go attack them. Um, we have the Assembler. Of course, Blacksmith and Gizmo 4. Spend 2 mana to discard 1 item as a Gizmo of the same rarity. 
And then we have Boom Maker, Bombs and Blacksmith 4. When rolling the die for a bomb in the range attack, you may discard one item to replace the die with small bombs. You can go up to orange or large bombs. You can go up to red. Just increase your bombs. Definitely fun. Then we have our new ability. We have Firecraft. Take one fire damage. Once per round, place one fire on a hand slot uh, accessory or hand slot of one hero in line of sight. When they attack, they may discard one fire to gain one um, yellow and orange die or one red die and then add one fire to it. So that's kind of neat. You can take it, but if you don't have someone in line of sight, um, you're going to have to keep taking fire damage. So you got to kind of watch that. And then craft to uh, place two on one hero's action slot when they attack. You may discard each of these. I don't think because it goes on your slot, I don't think that it will set them on fire. Basically, you're igniting their weapon. Um, Alright, then our final two are special ability. We have animate item. Choose one item in your inventory. Place one mana on it from the reserve or from another item. Item to the mana can be used as if they were equipped and do not grant dice. Uh, limit two with mana. So that's kind of neat. You can basically get the extra abilities from them. And then we have the Lightbringer Ascension, which lets you roll the Shadow Geist in Light Zones. You can't use your Shadow Effects in Light Zones. Instead, you may use place up to three large bombs in the Defender's Zone. Now, this can be a little bit harder to, to knock out because, again, like lots of the other characters, you can kind of pick something that overall works with any play type. Um, this one doesn't necessarily work that way. I mean, it lets you play bombs regardless if you chose bombs or not, um, which is fun because then you don't have to choose bombs. But it doesn't really upgrade anything else, but it's hard when they have four different um, types of things they're doing. All right, so then we're going to look at our last Exo Armor, and then we will get into the uh, uh Roaming boss, roaming monster. Forgot what he was called. All right, so our top armor. We go up to a Syrian jet. Um, so we had steam jet, scorching jet. And now we have Syrian jet, which gives us two rerolls. Adds, uh, we have two yellow guys, two orange guys, and one red guy. As well as we have superior hand blades. We went from uh, hand blade, enhanced hand blade to superior, which lets us pay one to gain three swords, and they have two of each dice. So definitely super powerful there. Our bottom half will get us the steel helm. So we went iron to steel, and we're going to stay with steel helm, I guess. Um, stays the same, one defense. Uh, adds two shields. That doesn't upgrade. But now we have a battle suit. So we went from heavy suit or armored suit to heavy suit to battle suit, which gives you three dice of each color. So it's definitely a giant upgrade. Um, so that green guy is super helpful. Uh, reinforced legs. We had, um, we had mechanical legs. Reinforced legs. We're going to stay with reinforced legs. It gives us the two MP. So not everything gets upgraded by the third version. Um, just kind of unfortunate. And then we have the pressured engine, but we didn't also up the engine in the last two, but now we spent, so instead of up, upgrading our helmet and our legs, we're going to upgrade our engine to so discard an epic or a legendary item, plus one attack action once per round. So now you can also discard a legendary item as well, before it was just epic. So it gets you one other option. And if we flip these over just to see what they look like on the other side. Just kind of a little bit better picture of what our full suit looks like when we have it made. Since that token was kind of small. Alright. Um, I was going to say we're going to look at the uh, mob, but I forgot we have legendary items to look at. And we'll relook at our characters here quick to see what their abilities do now that we've seen everything. Alright, so 
after we've seen how everything works, Kaylee says, in combat, you can discard one item. So you have all in Gizmo, you can discard. Or Shadow, draw one mob from item to your current level. So basically, she's going to be really great at trading and upgrading stuff. And then, Jebediah says, plus two movements during your first move. And then Shadow, you may return one discarded item to your inventory. Um, so this only is going to work for items you actually discard. Um, but this works great for when you're trying to upgrade things. Alright, then let's look at these guys' set items. So we have Shadowbane. Um, attack, discard one item, add one reroll and two swords. And attack, discard to add one or two rerolls and three swords. Plus exo armor. If you are equipped with both parts of the exo armor, Shadowbane items. In your inventory, count to unlock these powers. Um, okay, just just basically stating it. If you have exo armor on, you can still use your abilities. Well, that makes sense. I wouldn't have thought that otherwise, but I guess that makes sense. Um, so it's not basically telling you that, so you don't assume that either A, I can use my set items, or I can use my exo armor. Uh, Tinker's Golden Hammers. Uh, light attack. If you kill a leader or roaming monster, draw an epic treasure. Uh, three and two dice. That's definitely not bad. Then we have the Hellfire. So we discard three fire from yourself. Discard one item to draw one treasure of the card of the same tier. Discard two from yourself to draw one item. Uh, to draw two, tre well, draw one treasure of the same tier, and. Hellfire Flame, resolve your fire at the end of your turn. Instead, you have to start your turn. And then the equipped parts of both, uh, you can use those. So basically, discard fire and an item to gain better treasure of the same quality. And here we have Tinker's Bomb Launcher. Ranged attack. Um, add one fire and place one small bomb in the defender's zone. Um, so two, two. Now this will work great with the flame craft, if you got this up there, if I can figure out where I put that, because the flame craft, craft skill lets you take one every turn. And it says once per round, place it on the here on the line of sight. I just stay out of everyone's sight, and you don't have to place it. Um, but yeah, I'll help you get these little fire on there a little bit quicker. Um, yeah, that's definitely fun. It's one of the few cards that doesn't have a light ability though. Usually they have something that doesn't in the light. Or maybe that's just Shadow Bang. I guess it's just Shadow Bang. Uh, and Darkbringer finally lets you use your Shadow Abilities instead. The Shadow Ability in this instead of your regular. For Gregor lets you use uh, both. And this says Shadow Ability. Draw two tokens from the treasure. Treasure bag, choose one to keep as a gizmo and return the other. So effective, not super great if you're not, especially if you don't really want to use gizmos. Um, but here we have, the thing is, um, so here we have Tinker's Noxious Rispo, uh, Shadow Action, perform two attacks once per round. Definitely helpful. Double Shot Crossbow. Alright, we are up to the mob. Now the mob, the Roaming Monster. We have a Metal Angel we are going to fight. Move all of these little cards out of the way. All right. So here's our metal angel. Let's take a look at him. We fought a bunch of other angels. Now we get to fight one that's decked out in armor. He's got these big expandable metal wings, double swords. Of course, he's got his flowing robes, his armor on. I like the neck shields are kind of cool. So now the question is really, is this guy an actual angel who just happens to have metal wings? Or is he some other guy that just threw on metal wings and is now calling himself an angel? I guess I'll never know because they don't have story plots for these guys. Um, Alright, Middle Angel has, at his level 1, 1 to 2 has 6 health per hero, uh, rolls 2 die, a blue and a black, and his attack is 1 yellow and 2 black. He says, 
For Metal Angel is in the dungeon, all heroes roll minus one defense while defending. If there is a hero in Metal Angel zone, Metal Angel attacks each hero in a zone twice, resolve each attack separately. Otherwise, Metal Angel moves three zones towards the closest hero. So he's fairly basic. Um, but there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you want these roaming monsters that don't have a bunch of special effects and mechanics. Basically, he's not near you, he's gonna move next try and get next to you. And if he is near you, he's gonna hit everyone twice. Um and then he also has his attack one claw, he gains plus two swords. So as upgraded versions, he's just going to gain more health and more dice. Level 5. And then if we jump up to the campaign mode, he saves 9 health per hero. Um, now he has 1, 2, and 3 die, and then 2, 1, and 4 black die. That's crazy. Um, 10 health per hero. This is one of the few times I've seen this change. So now it says Metal Angel is in a dungeon. All heroes roll minus one green die while defending. So basically, you up this high, you just up that because basically, I think rolling blue at this point is kind of negated a little bit. And then his final one, those are some crazy ass stats 12 health per hero. He gets five blue dice, two green dice, three shadow dice. Or uh, I keep calling them shadow, they're black dice. And then his attack is three. Uh, Yellow, three red, and four uh, black dice. So that's crazy. So that's our metal angel. Um, he's going to definitely do some damage. Um, you can just throw him in any campaign. That is the fun part about these expansions. So if you're looking for more characters, you can pick up bards, tinkers. They definitely have some unique gameplay elements. A um, little bit, I'd say, more advanced than the basic game. Um, but they'll still definitely look fun. Metal Angel, although on the other hand, seems a little bit more simplistic. Just very simple on what he does, but he does it well. Um, all these characters can be used right with any base game. Even if you don't own the campaign, you own the campaign. You can upgrade to play the later and better, uh, the more upgraded cards. Um, Alright, so check you guys out in the next video. Bye!